The federal government has directed the Nigerian mission in Thailand not to evacuate any stranded individual who fails to pay for his accommodation and feeding charges ahead of repatriation. This was contained in a letter to the evacuees signed by the head of Chancery Nigerian mission in Thailand, Nicholas Uhomoibi, and dated May 14th of 2020. As stated in the letter, the evacuees are to pay 297,000 naira for their accommodation and feeding ahead of their arrival to Nigeria. The government has already evacuated about 253 Nigerians from the United Kingdom and 265 others from Dubai in the past weeks. Now, legal practitioner Kissinja Ikoku joins us from Imo State to discuss this matter. Good evening, Mr. Ikoku. Uh, good evening, Felice. Thank you for joining us. What's your reaction to this latest guideline from the federal government? Uh, very well. I, I don't to be emotional. Uh, the COVID-19 period has been told on governments and emergency situations. Uh, various governments uh, in different countries have a handful in their hands. And um, I don't think there any government, any responsible government will want to add to its responsibility um, taking care of the quarantine demands or Sell, uh, 14 days isolation demand for its citizens in diaspora. That is very, very um, clear. If um, the federal government has extended its help to uh, help them get a flight, even in this um, coronavirus pandemic era, uh, it is commonsensical that anybody should uh, put the bill for the 14 days isolation period. I think the federal government has so much in its hands than to think about uh, putting the bills for the isolation. If, of course, um, uh, if we want to make it very clear, if they can, if they accept to be to be kept in the isolation centers that the federal government have, but you will know the, the other I, I'm going to it, they will seek they will seek uh, a, their comfort and they will uh, protest against being quarantined in the isolation center. So if it is a hotel situation where they will demand their comfort. They should be able to foot to foot the bill. The federal government cannot, within the emergency situation it is facing, uh, cushion the effect of the 14 days uh, uh, self isolation period for its evacuees, people who they evacuated from other countries down to the country. Well, well, okay, what's your take on suggestions that the government should not charge these Nigerians? You know, that conversation is already ongoing in some quarters because the argument is that some of these Nigerians might have financial challenges in this pandemic, uh, like most, um, most others, but should use some of the funds donated for the fight against uh, COVID-19 and then solve this issue of payment for them. If the federal government has handled uh, the flight uh, for them, I think that is good enough. Um, then if they feel the federal government should handle that, the only place the federal government can accommodate them, if you ask me, is the COVID-19 isolation centers. But you know that if they are kept in the COVID-19 isolation centers, um, little um, over time, you will see them protesting that they've not been given enough welfare They've not been placed in a better position. And that's what the federal government said. We are going to enforce mandatory 14 days self isolation for you. And it is going to be, if you want it in a hotel of your comfort, then you are going to pay the bill. So they have a choice to elect to be in the isolation centers which have been provided for, for people who have contacted COVID 19 in Nigeria. If they elect to be uh, kept in the isolation centers, that is not a problem. But if they will need their comfort and their welfare, then they must pay. All right. Away from Nigeria's returnee, let's talk about your base, Imo State. What's your assessment of government's efforts towards ensuring that the virus does not spread in the state, uh, you know, any further? Um, I want to say firsthand, um, you know, Imo is one of the lucky states. Um, if you if you noticed uh, from the first uh, lockdown uh, measures, if Imo um, and few other states were like other states in Nigeria, of course you will agree with me that by today Nigeria would have, would have been free of coronavirus. Imo is recording um, seven cases as of today. Of those seven cases, I want to tell you first and that all of them are returnees 
from states outside Imo State, like Lagos, Kano, Abuja, and Kogi State. We have not had a single record of uh, community transmission in Imo State. That, um, so far, so good. It means the measures of the lockdown was a total success in Imo State. But what we have always conversed to our governor has been that Imo, uh, that we adopt specific and peculiar measures to suit the Imo case. Imo is not Lagos, Ogu, Ekiti, and Kano, where you have community trans, uh, uh, transmission. We don't have that. So that's why we have been clamoring for our governor to put his strength in enforcing the, the mandatory regulation that inter, in, in, interstate travel should be banned. That has failed because, as of today, all the seven cases that have been recorded in Nemo are people who have returned from other states. What it means is that if our governor is able to concentrate his effort in ensuring that um, there is no interstate travel, just like the president has given that directive, then Imo will be safe and be waiting for um, when the federal government would have been declaring that uh, Nigeria is free of COVID-19. So right. what we are demanding is that our governor uh, devises specific measures to suit the Imo situation. Right. That is to say, cool. enforce right. our gates, our borders, and make sure uh, the regulation on uh, non uh, the ban on non-interstate travel is enforced to the letter in the case of Imo. All right. Legal practitioner Ikoku Kisinga, thank you so very much for your time with us on News on the Hour here on Plus TV Africa. And keep safe where you are too. Thank you very much for having me.